homie was like, are you saying you're about to do a war crime? Please say it slowly into the microphone. I didn't fully understand. Russia struggled to capture a Ukrainian town and the intercepted radio messages show why. These are radio transmissions intercepted from Russian soldiers in Ukraine. Direct all weapons, you need to aim on them in that direction. What you're hearing are real-time battlefield communications between rank-and-file units on the front lines. They reveal a Russian military early on, already facing major challenges to get air support and fuel, and even possibly committing war crimes. It's not clear why some Russian military units are using unencrypted frequencies. But what it means is that people with access to a radio receiver can listen in and record their conversations or interfere. This is Baran, do not understand. Please repeat more clearly. Jammer whistling. We collected hundreds of recordings like these, painstakingly captured by ham radio operators and open source groups across the world. We focused on radio intercepts from the first 24 hours of the Russian assault on Makariv, a small town along a strategic highway about 30 miles west of Kyiv. I thought you said it was bullshit about the radio. I still think it's bullshit. And at least confirm that the speech in those radio messages is very clear. No Ukrainian accent, of course. Not sure if fake or not. The Russian military using unencrypted frequencies seems very sus. I mean, I've heard the same audio live on multiple people's independent stream. I, dude, it it does. Maybe it's real. I don't know. I mean, maybe it was a fucking. Maybe it was a a uh, misstep or something. But it does seem like it does seem really fucking crazy. Modern technology capabilities combined with unupgraded and decaying military infrastructure combining to make them shit. Make shit like this a possibility is absolutely wild what modern war is like. The no food, no gas, no logistics stuff is bullshit. Like, it's it's really, really difficult to fucking put a fully functioning supply chain through a fucking hostile country with 44 million domestic population that's heavily armed as a consequence of, like, NATO help giving them intelligence, NATO nations giving them weapons. I mean, the entire planet is, like, engaging basically in this proxy war against Russia. That part I do understand. Radio encryption is basic, like the most basic. I find it hard to believe, but anything is possible, I guess. Yeah. We're on 30. This is Yug 95. Do you hear Lumpa? These intercepts give a rare, unvarnished window into the operations of an invading army plagued by communication errors and logistical problems. So how did we determine these were Russian troops speaking? By linking these radio exchanges with visual evidence and eyewitness accounts. Listen, for example, to this next transmission about a battle in a village called Motijan. Retreated, retreated from the locality of Motsin. Call sign Yug 95 reports his unit pulled out of the battle and lost an armored vehicle called an MTLB. This aligns with a telegram post from the mayor of Makarov about an hour earlier, and with videos verified by the Times showing Russians entering Motijin that afternoon. We also see Russian armor littering the area the next day, including at least one MTLB. I that information on the battlefield is genuine is just foolish in my opinion. After this point, information obtained is like obtained because Russia wants it out there. I mean, who knows? Maybe they were. I mean, my point of view on this sort of stuff is that, like, if you think it's be, if the answer to your question, if the missing puzzle piece is, oh, they're just too stupid and they overlooked it. Oftentimes, it's probably not the case. And the reason why I say that is because this is basic war shit. You know what I mean? Like encrypting radio frequencies and radio messages is like pretty basic stuff. Who are Max Cope Copium? To a certain extent, it seems dumb the Russians wouldn't have enough OPSEC to use unencrypted comms, but by the same token, it seems kind of legit. Bro, 
How the fuck do they get them to not use their phone? The one thing that has been harming the Ukrainian side, specifically like the foreign battalions, but also just the average Ukrainians is like their cell phones. They're using cell phones, which is like basically the best way to just like get it lit up. But if they have enough OPSEC to not use cell phones, it, it's wild that they would overlook this part. It seems crazy. Do you understand why I think it seems crazy? Cause it's like not being able to adequately predict how muddy the terrain is going to be is one thing. That's fine. Like, that's a misstep. That's a miscalculation. But this is literally like, I, I don't know. This is like pretty basic. This is more insane than that. Way more insane than that. Like UG95 reported, Motijin is just one of many specific battle locations around Makarov that we heard Russian troops mention on the radio intercepts. <laughs> Guys, U.S. soldiers were leaking bases over Strava running apps in Fitbit. Come on. Yeah, that is, that is again, um, that's a real story for the record. And now it's a part of OPSEC. But we're not even talking about that. What we're talking about is like even more basic than that. You know what I mean? We cross-checked these with visuals we geolocated to document sites and times of Russian military activity. What we were able to capture are mostly visual and audio fragments, not necessarily the full sequence of events. But by piecing them together, we can establish the dynamics that were playing out on the ground during the first attack on Makarov, which was a bucolic and peaceful place until February 27th. That morning, locals spot Russian military vehicles moving into the area. Within hours, we hear Russian troops on the radio giving battlefield updates. We downed the enemy helicopter from Strela missiles over with two missiles. Boron 30 says down one helicopter with two missiles over. Over the course of the assault, Russians openly disclose attack plans for anyone to hear. Nick 2, this is Almaz. For your information, in 10 minutes, our fighter just will begin working. Did you understand me? Their language is often raw. Give me all the fucking coordinates. Let's make strikes. We'll fucking blow them apart into pieces. These bastard motherfuckers over. Looking out of their windows, residents see firefights erupting. In the following radio transmission, we hear repeated orders to strike an entire residential area after it's cleared of so-called property, which is likely code for Russian personnel or equipment. Ron 30, this is Yug 95 over. There was a decision made to remove the first property from the residential area and to cover the residential area with artillery over. Speak slower, please, repeat it again. He's like, bro, please tell us the war crime. Homie was like, are, is that, are you saying you're about to do a war crime? Please say it slowly into the microphone. I didn't fully understand. Are we, are we going to do, I can't hear you. Can you tell me what the details of the war crime you're about to engage in are? <laughs> I mean, dude, it, it's probably real. It, it's probably real. Uh, it, you know, you guys are fucking hopped up. To remove the first property from the residential area and to cover the residential area with artillery. Over. Visual evidence and interviews show multiple instances where Russians appeared to have openly fired on civilians around Makarov. They're showing a car, uh, a family, the car that had a family in it, and they shot the car and the family. There's a person lying inside. They were driving in the direction of Makarov. There are Russian the tanks standing there. Following security camera footage shows a Russian armored vehicle firing several rounds into this sedan. I'm only gonna, you've probably seen this video already. Don't they say that 40% of American soldiers who are new are unwilling to kill enemy for certain reason, purposely aim above enemy soldiers? I wonder if some Russians are doing the same. What do you mean? We're about to see, uh, uh, well, we're not going to watch it, but this is an instance where they're not doing the same. Maya. Hassan, if I was a worm, would you kill me? Yes. Not even a question. I wouldn't even think twice about it. What do you mean? You're a worm at that point. You're not you. Isn't she literally a bird? She's responsible for a worm genocide. Like, she, she literally has burbs. So yeah, they do, they do fire into this. Without any apparent warning or provocation. 
and there's a the family. Passengers, an elderly couple. Yeah, it's they show the body. This is really fucked up. I remember killed instantly. This. And at one point, we hear a frantic dispatch from a unit. Under we don't know why they did that. To this day, I don't know why they did that. Some people originally were saying that it was a Russian tank. And then some people were saying, no, actually, it's a Ukrainian tank. Definitely. I mean, it didn't have a Z on it, but I have no fucking clue why they did that. It is so insanely fucked up. So insanely fucked up. No, this isn't the one. We're not talking about the V. No, the tank itself, the one that shot at that elderly couple. And if you've already seen it, like... Camera footage. You, you've seen it. But the tank itself doesn't have any uh, markings on it. There's a tank that veers and drives over the old lady. No, that, that one was an armored personnel carrier, and that was a Ukrainian armored personnel carrier that had lost control. That wasn't a Russian one. That, that absolutely was a Ukrainian armored personnel carrier. Luckily, the person didn't die. Um, that was confirmed, but they were in an active firefight. And yes, the person in the car literally survived. Yeah. We hear a frantic dispatch from a unit under attack. They shot from the car first. Are you fucking insane? They shot from the car first. You Have you seen the fucking elderly couple with their faces melted? They did not shoot from the car first, you fucking idiot. What's wrong with you, dude? What the Christ? Literally a fucking elderly couple. Anyway, my situation is very tense. Tanks are approaching. I don't know whose tanks they are. Cannot identify them. There's a drone over the area. And the area is under fire. From all directions. There are even moments when call sign Baron 30 sounds close to tears. This is Baron over. Will you be able to drive over here? Over? I won't be able to drive there. I won't be able to drive there. The roads are under fire. On the way here, I was fired on. Over the course of the initial battle, the skies were rocked with explosions. In a series of radio exchanges, we hear how communication failures delay urgent requests for air support amid mounting casualties. Ask Lumpas for air support. From the heli, from the heli, do you understand me? Over. Yuk 95, I understand you, I understand you. I can't reach Lumpas. This is Buran, over. I understood you, understood you. Keep trying, keep trying. Over. The boys are suffering, later, suffering. Air support still hasn't arrived. We're on 30. This is Yug 95. You fucking forgot about air support. You forgot over. Video evidence suggests some Russian units were not only attacked, but left stranded. The radio chatter is full of troops who lack critical supplies. I urgently need refueling, says Serena 03. Water. Supplies. Serena. Over. Urgently need fuel. Urgently need fuel. Vehicle stalling on the road. Urgently need fuel. And Russian troops face yet another menace. Ukrainian interlopers mocking them on their open radio channels. Looking for retreat routes. Looking for retreat routes. Buran, go home. It's better to be a deserter than fertilizer. Russian forces are now using more code words and cell phones to communicate, but signals are still compromised. The Times has found that even many generals are using unsecured phones and radios, which has led to at least one getting tracked and killed by Ukrainians. Ukrainian officials claim they have been pushing Russians out of the town of Makariv for now. But fighting in the area continues. So does the radio chatter. Radio Warner mentioned that the officers frequently skimp on maintenance and infrastructure since they were surprised to be deployed. They're probably lagging that stuff. I mean, that's like, it's like fucking crazy, it seems. Uh, the the invasion was was bloodthirsty and and violent unacceptable and dumb but you know it's like going to war without fucking bringing bombs you know what i mean like oh oops we forgot we forgot our missiles you know i guess we're just gonna have to fucking use guns